All right, so today we're gonna do a 16 inch M3 MacBook Pro day in the life review. And that means no using my main workstation. This MacBook is incredibly powerful, has an awesome display and great battery life, but it's also quite big and heavy. So let's see how that plays out. So overall, the form factor is super nice and clean. I opted for the space black, which I really like. And I guess technically it does pick up more fingerprints than the silver model, which I don't think is a big deal. And if that is something that bothers you, you can always just wipe it down every once in a while. Now I briefly talked about portability earlier but if you choose the 16 inch version over the 14 inch model you are getting a pretty hefty device we're looking at either 4.7 or 4.8 pounds depending on which chip configuration you go with and i'll talk more about this later on now i pretty much always carry my macbook in a backpack so size and weight are not super meaningful to me and i'm willing to carry the additional weight in order to get a larger display with more real estate to work with now having said that if you need to put your macbook in a smaller bag or a purse or or if you're carrying it around, make sure that this form factor actually works for you. I would even go to the store and try it out. And you can always check out other options like the 15 inch MacBook Air or the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now in terms of ports, the MacBook Pro has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a MagSafe port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left. And then another Thunderbolt port, an SDXC card reader and an HDMI port on the right. This is plenty of ports for what I need. And I love that I have MagSafe on this. So whether I'm at home or when I'm traveling or out and about, I don't have to worry about an accidental cable pull sending this MacBook flying across the room. The HDMI port makes it super easy for me to connect to external displays, even if they're older ones. And the SDXC card reader means that I don't need to bring a card reader with me when I travel. All right, so let's get this day started with a quick drive to Blue Sky Brews so I can reply to some emails, answer as many of your comments as I can, and I also have a list of videos that I've been meaning to check out. Now, looking at the display, this is definitely my favorite display of any of of the MacBooks. And as soon as you open it up for the first time, it's hard not to involuntarily smile. I remember the first time that I edited thumbnails on this MacBook. These were files that I started working on with my main workstation and everything looked so much better, both in terms of sharpness and color accuracy because it's a P3 display. And when I'm working with photos or videos, it's really nice to know that I can trust what I see on my screen. This is a 16.2 inch liquid retina XDR display. So Apple is using mini LEDs with small dimming zones. In terms of brightness, we're getting 600 nits for SDR content and for HDR content, it's 1000 nits of sustained full screen brightness or 1600 nits peak brightness. Now I mostly use my MacBook inside, but when I'm out on my patio or if I'm working at a coffee shop or if I'm traveling, it's really nice to have that additional brightness. And it's also nice that the screen is not super reflective. Now the size of the display is something else that makes me really like this MacBook. I'm used to working with multiple monitors at my main workstation. So when I'm away from it, I want as as big a screen as I can get. And it's super helpful when I'm replying to emails or when I'm doing research for a video and I can have multiple apps open at the same time. When I'm editing videos, I can get a longer timeline and larger panels. When I'm editing photos, I have a larger canvas to work with. And even if I'm just working with a single document, spreadsheet, or when I'm writing code, I can see more without having to scroll. This MacBook also has a ProMotion display, which is Apple's adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 Hertz. So depending on what I'm doing, the display can go from 24 Hertz Hertz, all the way up to 120 hertz in order to optimize the user experience and maximize battery life. Now, something else that I like to do when I'm working away from home or when I travel is to use Sidecar. So if you're not familiar with Sidecar, basically you can use your iPad as an additional display for your Mac or MacBook. And this way I have an additional 13 inch display anywhere I go. It works wirelessly. It's super easy to get going. And if you want to see a quick tutorial, I'll link to that video in the description. All right, so now it's time for lunch. I'm going to go ahead and check out the market on Lee. It's also known as Dominic's Deli. I'm going to get some food and do some research for my next video. Now, something else that's super important to me is the user experience with the keyboard and the trackpad. So in general, MacBooks might have my favorite keyboards of any laptop. This one has black anodized aluminum, which I think looks great. There's a full row of function keys, so there's no touch bar and the keys themselves are outstanding. There is a good amount of feedback and with the large palm rest assembly, the overall typing experience is excellent. I also love that iMessage is built into Mac OS. So if I need to quickly reply to a text while I'm on my MacBook, I don't need to reach for my phone and typing is much faster. Now the trackpad is my favorite trackpad on any laptop. It's giant. It's about the size of my hand. You can click anywhere. It has pressure sensing capabilities. And this trackpad has been super responsive and accurate for me. So 10 out of 
of 10 for the keyboard and the trackpad. All right, so taking a quick peek at battery life shows us that we're still at 96%, which is great. Now going back to the top right of the keyboard, we see the newer implementation of Touch ID with a larger key. There's also a divot in the center of the key, which guides your fingertip to the right spot, and it works great. Now I was really hoping that we would get Face ID this time, but maybe that's something that Apple is keeping for the M4 version. And we'll talk more about the notch in just a minute, but if you wanna take your 16 inch MacBook Pro and turn it into a full workstation, check out the Anchor Prime charging docking station. You can connect two 4K 60 hertz displays. You have up to 160 watts total power for charging multiple accessories, 10 gigabits per second data transfer, audio and ethernet ports, plus a smart screen, which displays real-time charging speeds, transfer speeds, HDMI status, and any alerts. If instead you need a powerful charging solution, the Anchor Prime charging station gives you up to 240 watts of charging and up to 140 watts from one of the four USB-C ports. You can also get 12 watts from one of the two USB-A ports. It's super compact, provides two additional outlets on your desktop. It has a smart display and full control using the app with either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And for the best results, make sure that you use premium USB-C cables like this upcycled braided anchor cable, which is rated for up to 240 watts and 300,000 bends to ensure durability. So click the links in the description for your anchor accessories and thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now back to the notch, let me start out by saying this. The notch is there and you can always see it unless you have a dark menu bar. So if you think it's ugly and that's somehow going to ruin the user experience for you, don't buy any of the current MacBooks. Personally, for how I use this MacBook and for that matter, every other MacBook that has a notch, it's always over the menu bar or a black background if I'm watching content. So it simply has never really been a real life issue for me. Now, would I rather it not be there? In theory, yes, but not if it means that I need to have larger bezels on the top of the MacBook, because like I said, it really doesn't become an issue for anything that I do with this MacBook. Now, as far as the quality of the camera, we're getting 1080p, which I think is pretty good, and here's a quick sample. Here's a quick test of the camera and the microphone on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. This should give you a pretty good idea of the type of image quality that you're going to get and the type of audio quality that you'll get for video calls. And here's another test now using better light. So this way you can see the difference between the low light performance and performance in better lighting conditions. Now, most of the time I'm using headphones with this MacBook, but if you use the speakers, these might be the best speakers that I've ever tested on a laptop. And putting them in the context of a laptop speakers, I'm super happy with them. All right, it was time for a short break in my day to help clear my mind, so I decided to go to the driving range and hit some golf balls. Now, I can quickly check out some tips that I've written down after watching a video, and it's nice that Apple Notes syncs from my MacBook Pro to my iPad and my iPhone, so I always have access to them. I just started playing golf again after a long break and I find golf relaxing and extremely challenging at the same time. Okay, now it's time to get back home and continue to work. Now, I'm super impressed with the processing power of this chip and this particular MacBook comes with the M3 Pro chip with a 12 core CPU and an 18 core GPU, but I've also had one with the M3 Max chip with 14 cores and 30 cores. So here are some benchmarks for those of you who are interested. Now, practically speaking, even just the M3 Pro chip absolutely crushes everything that I throw at it. I've been working on editing a video that I shot at Sony Condo. I'm using 4K footage from my A7S III, 4K footage from the A9 III, and 4K footage from my iPhone 15 Pro. I'm adding motion graphics, sounds, and even with 16 gigabytes of unified memory, it's easily doing the job. I also edited a couple of videos when I was at the event, and it was super convenient to have the card reader built right into my MacBook, so I didn't have to remember to bring one with me. And again, it's super nice to be able to just airdrop stuff right from my iPhone. Now, remember that you can't upgrade this MacBook after you buy it. So make sure that you get enough RAM for what you need, because in terms of processing power, you have a ton of overhead. And what I don't want to happen is that you get to a point where the laptop can still do what you need in terms of CPU performance, but you have to upgrade because you don't have enough RAM. Now, looking at internal storage, I make sure that I have enough for all the apps that I need and all the files that I want to store locally. And I know Know that I'll end up using an external SSD for my video projects regardless of how much internal storage I get. Now in terms of choosing whether to go with the M3 Max chip, that's really reserved for users who are just 
pushing their MacBook to the extreme. And those types of users typically know that they need the best chip possible. The advice that I give most people is if you don't know that you need an M3 Max chip, you don't need an M3 Max chip. All right, so it's now almost 20 after eight in the evening and the battery life is still at 66%, which I think is super impressive. I did a lot of work. I edited some videos, edited some photos, and then also watched some videos and did some research. And I still have 66% left, which means I really didn't have to worry about battery life at all. And when you try to compare this to your own life, think about how often you go a full day without even having the opportunity to charge. And again, this is something that I didn't need to worry about at all today. Now, realistically speaking, ever since Apple released the M1 chip, the battery life in the MacBooks has been absolutely outstanding. And then the 16 inch M3 Pro is no exception. Now, to be totally fair, personally, I never like to risk it. So whenever I'm traveling or I'm out and about, I still bring a battery bank with me just in case. But again, it's not something that I needed today at all. Now, as far as charging, if you have a few minutes, the 16 inch M3 MacBook Pro comes with a 140 watt fast charger and it uses MagSafe. So you can very quickly top it off. And again, you don't have to worry about the cable being yanked out and sending your MacBook flying off the desk. Now, one other thing that I can do with the MacBook Pro, whether I'm at home or traveling and I want a multi-display interface, but I don't wanna sit at my desk is that I can take my Apple Vision Pro and then easily connect it. And again, I can have two 4K displays. And another advantage is that if I'm in public, other people can't see what I'm working on. So after almost six months of using the 16 inch M3 MacBook Pro, what do I think? I have to say that it's my favorite MacBook and the one that I typically take with me when I travel, even though it's a bit big and heavy. If you're looking for an extremely powerful MacBook with an incredible large display, excellent keyboard and trackpad, a good camera and amazing speakers, the 16 inch M3 MacBook MacBook Pro is a fantastic option. And check out this comparison with the 15 inch MacBook Air. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.